is, is no longer what's down here, but what's above and where he is. And so, so I, I just thank God for the selection and, and certainly thank God in the spirit of what you were sung. As I sat there just with my eyes closed, just imagining, just to leave here. Not that I'm ready now, but just I know one day is coming. Amen. And you talking about finally being happy and being at peace? Yes, Lord. When you see Jesus. Amen. That, that, that ought to touch somebody. Forget about your whatever is going on right now. You, you need to be putting your eyes on Jesus. And just imagining what it is going to be to behold his face. Look upon the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundation of the world. And, and, and right now, that ought to just make us just be humbled by the fact of what Jesus did for us. Because he did not have to do it. And, but I'm glad, and I think there are some others who are glad that he did. And uh, he died in our stead. And so we thank God. Thank God for that choice of selection. Because I'm telling you, the, the choir, they almost made me think about angels singing. Yes, I, I, I was sitting there imagining. Uh, man, I don't know about you, I'm just telling personally what I was experiencing there about, about just imagining being with Jesus. Amen, because Jesus already got him an angelic force. We, we just getting ourselves ready to be a part of that one day. And so, so God bless you, saints. We get ready to go forward. Uh, but, but thank God just for a moment, uh, just to be in worship. Uh, because see, it ain't about how you shout or how you holler. Somebody don't know that worship is just sometimes talking and meditating on God and his goodness, his mercy and his grace. And so we thank the Lord at this time bow with us now. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for how your spirit has abided in this place. We, we pray he will continue to guide your servant, Lord, that we will be able to preach that which you have led us to preach, that it will accomplish your purpose, that it can edify we, your people, and not only that, it can lead a hungry soul to Christ. So God bless us. Use us now. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Today we would like to look at the Romans chapter 12, verse 1, which is so familiar. It's been quoted by many saints, but it is certainly a serious passage uh, because we do thank the Spirit for leading us here because He always has a reason for the direction He gives us. And so we have said we have been in these series of messages has been dealing with the condition of the house. And, and this is, I guess, part six. Yes, with a, another subject. And so, let's look at verse one. Let's read together. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice a holy, acceptable one to die, which is your reasonable service. Amen. Amen. And today we just like to talk about the right house for God. The right house for God. In this text today, Paul, who has been given the credit of writing this particular book, Paul, that many of us knew, was a servant of God. He was one that God had called to preach the gospel. And not only that, he called him to write many books. Some have given him the credit of writing over half the New Testament books. And so here before us is one of those many books that has been titled the Book of Romans. And Paul, in writing, to those in Rome, it was full of believers who had come to Christ, who had received Christ as their personal Savior. Paul, in this text, he pleads with the believers 
that there is a certain way they need to present themselves before God. Because in the Old Testament, if many of us are familiar with the law and with the priests, they were to offer animals and other sacrifices, not only for the people, but for, for themselves. This was a practice and ritual until Jesus offered himself as the ultimate sacrifice. And I pray you know that Jesus paid our debt. Yes, he was certainly a lamb that was slain. And so when the Lord offered himself, there was no more need for other animals, other substitutes. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Yes, and, and that's why I was just excited before getting to this message that we need to understand what Jesus did in our behalf. I, I, I know there's some who don't care the fact that here comes someone from heaven who took on human flesh, went to a cross and died for us. And, and, and so some don't even care or believe that this event took place. But we are here to let you know, brothers and sisters, that Jesus was that perfect sacrifice for our sins. No other human was eligible. No other human was perfect or sinless where they could have died in our stead. But here comes Jesus who willingly took upon flesh to show to us that there was a better way that God had to offer. Since this is true, why is there a need for we who believe in Jesus to have to present our bodies? Now, now that's a good question because if Jesus paid the price, if Jesus was the sacrifice, what need is there for us to present our bodies? Wasn't his sacrifice enough? And, and of course we would say yes, but what Paul is encouraging has to do with a personal responsibility. And, and how many of us know in here that every saint ought to offer their body to God? Yes. Because you know we offer it to everything else <laughs> but God. And, and, and so therefore, why not offer this body for the Lord's service? Yes. Because what you offer should be a house that wants to be a perfect place where his presence can wait. Because Paul said to the Corinthians in his writing to him, he, he said a question, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost who dwells in you? And, and so many of us have somewhere along the way forgotten that this body that we now reside in is also a place, if we believe in God, where the Holy Ghost is to be. Yeah. And, 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 and you ought to be concerned with if that house is the right house for God. Yes. Because when you look at verse 1, Paul seems like he's pleading with his writers, with his readers. And, 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 and he says, I beseech you, which is a word of pleading. Therefore, he says, brethren, and, and this includes men and women, because Paul is not speaking just to no men. And, and some say he was just probably talking to them. No, no, he was speaking in general to the church, to the believers. He says, by the mercies of God. And, and how many of us understand that each day, mercy is given to us? It's in fact every time you open your eyes to rise in the morning, God gives new mercy. Not saying that he can't let the yesterday mercy last, but it just goes to show you our God is just faithful enough to give us new mercy. Amen. And I think you understand what mercy is. Mercy is that of compassion. It's that of withholding really what we should get or deserve. And so God is identified through Paul. He says by the mercies of God. He, he really almost put it by the forbearance of God that you have a responsibility towards him. And first of all, he tells us simply this. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Now, what he is saying that we need to make sure this house 
<laughs> that we are presently still in, this tabernacle that Paul also calls it, is a place that is going to be used as a living sacrifice. Yeah. What is that he's saying? He's saying that it ought to be proof that Jesus or his spirit is dwelling in your house. Yeah. And, and brothers and sisters, no matter how we look at this today, God wants a right house. Yeah. He just don't want no house that's been, what, abused and that's been misused. Yeah. That's been uh, just done with as we please. But yeah. We ought to be so concerned that I want my house to be right for God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and why? Because he wants to be in your life. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and brothers and sisters, if we don't realize this today, you're fooling yourself if you think you're living on your own. Yeah, no. There's no way a believer in Christ has the audacity mm -hmm. to declare that I'm making it on my own. But every one of us have someone in us mm -hmm. that Jesus promised to us would be what? The Holy Ghost. Yeah. Who will take a residence in your house. Yeah. And when I talk about house, I'm talking about this body. This, yeah. this, this present tabernacle that all of us love and we are living in. Because yeah. there's all of us who love it. We like to do whatever we can with it. We like to fix it up. We like to make sure it looks good. <laughs> We like to make sure it's in good health and, and whatever the reason that make you want to do for your house, mm -hmm. consider what God wants us to do. He wants us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. He wants us to be proof of someone that he has saved. You know, you're no longer going to do what Jesus did because Jesus did that. But you ought to now be living proof that I am who God saved me to be. And brother and sister, it matters if the house is right. Yes. And, and, and that's why Paul is suggesting that we have a personal responsibility. I can't do it for nobody else. I got to do it for myself. Amen. Reverend Adams can't help someone else. Amen. To present their bodies. They got to do that on their own. Yes. And, and, and too many times we want others to do it for us, but you got to offer yourself to the service of the Lord. Yes, yes. And, and that's why he says a living sacrifice. That when others will see you, they'll know that that's somebody that's in the Lord. Yes. Somebody that's living for him. Somebody that's proof yes. that he saved them. Yes. And brothers and sisters, if we don't believe this or not, people rather see as they say a sermon yes. Yes. than hear one. They, they rather see your life than hear about you talk about it. Amen. Because, see, it's good. We can talk about how saved we are. We talk about how holy we are. We can talk about how sanctified and for the Holy Ghost. But if it's not measuring up to what we say, yeah. then somebody got questions yeah. about what you have said and what they see. Yeah. And so that's why he says present your bodies a living sacrifice. Because God wants us to be his instrument. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He wants us to be the right house that the Holy Ghost can dwell in. Yes. But not only that, he then says holy. And, and holy is a word that we still need to get hooked up with. Because it ain't just some religion. Yes, some want to say that church down the street is holy. But guess what? Every believer in Christ should be holy. Yes. Holy has to do with being Good, a, a good life, a right life, yes. has to be something that's been consecrated yes. for the purpose of God and, and is a way of living. And, and we need to be holy yes. when we present these bodies to God. Because he says, present your body a living sacrifice, holy, and, and it ought to be consecrated, as they say, a consecrated body yes. that's going to be used for his service. And I wonder how many of us in here want that type of house that God can use. Yeah. Amen. That want to be used for the glory of the kingdom. Amen. And, and, and Paul says this, and I say he pleads with them that they need to present themselves before God. Yeah. Amen. As a living sacrifice, as a holy one. And, and brothers and sisters, God wants us to practice living holy. Yeah. Yeah. And some of may wonder how I do. I, I just do what the Lord says. And you can be holy. 
Every day we ought to be practicing holy living. Amen. We just shouldn't be casually living a life in Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But our life ought to be presenting is proof that that's somebody who's serious about the Lord. Yeah. And no matter how we look at this, the house needs to be right for God. Yes. Amen. And, and, and it's good that he suggests this because he tells us to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy. Yes. Amen. And, and don't you know that God is holy? Yes, he is. We are commissioned in the word to be holy as he is holy. Yes. And, and don't be afraid of holy. Because yes. I know in the Baptist, we don't talk a lot about holiness. But we need to be learned on what holy is. Yes. It has to do with the way God is and the way we ought to be in God. Yes. And so therefore we are told to present our body as holy. Yes. Yes. It's for his service. Yes. It's more or less to be used for whatever God wants to do with this body. Yes. And somebody ought to be willing to want to be used by God. Yes. Amen. It's more than us showing up here on Sunday. Yes. Amen. Because, see, this place, this dwelling, on, is certainly the house of God. Yes. But when you look at yourself, yes. then you need to consider, am, is this house that I now live in, that I have been born in, as is a house that God can accept? That's the thing that Paul, you know, when, when he gets to that third part of acceptable unto God, it has to be something God is Please, with. Yes, yes. And don't you want God to be pleased yes, yes. with the house that you're in? Because yes. listen, when you got saved through Jesus, Jesus made you into what? A new creation. Right. Well, as the scripture says, a new creature oh, yeah. in Christ. Yes. Now, he did that by transforming your body into something that's more than it used to be. And aren't you glad that if the truth be told, we all are some used to be. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. I, I don't know about you, but, yes. but if the church would only be honest with yes. itself, yes. we're trying to fool people by saying you ain't used to be, yes. but you all used to be. Yes. We all fall under that category. Yes. But the question is, are you still that? Yes. Amen. Now, if you are, that means the house ain't right for God. And God wants the house to be right for his service. And that's why he says those three things, a living sacrifice, holy and finally acceptable unto God. Anybody here want God to be pleased with the house that you in? Amen, because too many times we're doing all we can to pollute the house. And sometimes it ain't really all our fault. It's because we have just got ourselves caught up. Doing things that are contrary to his word. Until the house now becomes what? Unacceptable unto God. But God wants us to have what we consider the right house for him. One that he can use for his glory. One that he can use for his service. Yeah. One he can use in honor of who he is. Yeah. And I don't know about you today, brothers and sisters. God wants us to be living sacrifices. He wants us to be holy. He wants us to finally be acceptable unto him. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Because if we got minds, amen, that are set on heaven, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. we better make sure the house is being right. There's no need of us fooling ourselves thinking I'm going to heaven anyhow. No, no, you're not going to go to heaven anyhow. Listen, by living contrary to what God requires. God wants us to understand the house needs to be right. Right for his service. He brings a presentation to us that when you go forth to present it, let it be a living sacrifice. Let it be wholly acceptable unto God. Oh, yeah. Listen, which is your reasonable service. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which I believe that's the least you can do. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's all Paul is saying at the end yeah. of the text. Yeah. That's the least you can do. Yeah. Because Jesus already done it for us. Yeah. 
And my brothers and my sisters, you may not understand why the house ought to be right for God, but God wants us to understand from the text. It needs to be a living sacrifice. Yes, yes. It needs to be holy yes. and acceptable unto God. Right. Some may say, why unto God? Well, God is the source of all we want. Yes. He's the source of what we need. And God wants us to believe that if we understand his part and what he's done for our bodies, yes. Yes. We ought to be willing participants yes. who wants to at least do what he requires of us. Yes. Yes. So therefore, the right house is what God is looking for. Yes. I believe that when Jesus spoke to the woman at the well, uh, and when he told her all about her past, yes. even about her present condition, oh, yeah. she realized that when he finally got on the subject of worshiping God, oh, yeah. He was really letting her understand that the house needs to be right. Oh, yeah. That is your reasonable service. Yeah. So you need to understand that if you're going to worship God, uh, oh, yeah. there are some requirements that it requires. Yeah. Uh, you need to understand that God wants you uh, yeah. to worship him uh, yeah. in spirit and in truth. Oh, yeah. uh, because the truth be told, uh, yeah. the Father seeks such uh, to worship yeah. him. Uh, yeah. My brothers and my sisters, yeah. uh, let's think about the text, uh, about our house that we're presently in. Uh, yeah. Are we truly living for God? Uh, yeah. Are we truly serving him like he wants us to serve? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are we live, really presenting these bodies yeah. uh, as proof of the salvation of the Lord? Yeah. Uh, because I do believe when you present your bodies yeah. uh, as a living sacrifice, yeah. Uh, yeah. as it being holy and yeah. acceptable unto God, uh, yeah. it means that you're doing what he requires. Yeah. Uh, that's the least yeah. you can do. Uh, yeah. Why do I stay right there? Uh, because God wants us to understand. Uh, there's not a whole lot uh, we can do uh, than do what the Lord requires of us. Uh, and that is to give him our reasonable service. So give God the best you have. Because uh, in turn, if you give him the best, uh, the best will come back to you. Uh, that's why it's important. Uh, if you don't mind hearing me today, uh, that your house be right. Uh, that your house be pure. Uh, that your house be a sacrifice. Uh, that your house be holy. Uh, that it be acceptable unto God. Uh, which Paul says uh, is your reasonable service. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, look at verse 2. Uh, he is a reminder. Uh, if we don't want the house to be right, uh, he says this. Uh, be not conformed uh, to this world. Uh, there's some of us uh, that want to stay with the world. Uh, there's some of us uh, who want to straddle the fence. Uh, but the Lord said, uh, if you want to have the house right, uh, you can't be conformed uh, to this world. Uh, but you got to be transformed uh, by the renewing of your mind. Uh, what does that mean? You need to be changed. Uh, you need to be changed uh, on the inside. Uh, that when the inside uh, has been changed uh, in a measure uh, up to the outside. Uh, because they will only see Christ. Uh, they'll know that what you say uh, is proof of you being saved. Uh, so Paul says uh, renewing uh, of the mind uh, has to take place. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, that means that if my mind's been changed uh, because of Jesus, uh, that means I got to do things uh, a little differently. Uh, I got to think a little differently. Uh, I got to live a little differently. Uh, I got to love a little differently. Uh, because I'm getting my house up uh, right for God. Because uh, if you don't realize uh, it's a process, uh, it's a work in motion. Uh, what God is trying uh, to let us see. Uh, he's patient with us uh, because it takes a day by day uh, walk with the Lord. Uh, you ain't going to ride uh, overnight. Uh, but it's a process uh, that continually uh, transforming you. Uh, and I'll be like this, uh, that since I've been changed, uh, I don't do uh, what I used to do. Uh, I don't go uh, where I used to go. Uh, I told the Lord, uh, I want my 
house uh, to be right for you. Uh, I want my house uh, to be living proof, uh, a sacrifice, uh, a holy place, uh, acceptable unto God. Uh, in the house, uh, anybody here uh, feels like that. Uh, anybody here uh, want the Lord uh, to work on you. Uh, well, I'm going to say it for myself. Uh, I want the power uh, to take me uh, just like clay. Uh, I want him to take the clay uh, that's already been hard uh, by the field of the world. Uh, I want him to take the clay uh, take it in his hand. Uh, I want him to mold it up, uh, shape it up, uh, make it what he wanted to be. Uh, of what I'm talking about. Uh, God can uh, make the house right up uh, where it'll be perfect. Uh, it'll be a living sacrifice. Uh, it'll be holy. Uh, it'll be acceptable uh, unto God. Uh, well, well, uh, my brothers and my sisters, uh, if you don't hear me today, uh, you ought to do what Paul says. Uh, he says to us, uh, present your body uh, as a living sacrifice, uh, holy, uh, acceptable uh, unto God. Uh, that's your reasonable service. Uh, anybody here uh, can believe that, uh, that God wants uh, the right house uh, for his spirit to dwell. Uh, he wants a house uh, that God can dwell in. Uh, but when he's in your house, uh, he knows how uh, to take care of you. Uh, he knows how uh, to strengthen you. Uh, he knows how uh, to heal you uh, when you get sick. Uh, anybody here uh, know what I'm talking about? Uh, if you trust God, uh, if you ain't satisfied uh, with your present condition, uh, I say to you, uh, give it to Jesus. Uh, and I got a witness, uh, if you give it to Jesus, uh, Jesus knows how uh, to turn you around. Uh, Jesus knows how uh, to deliver your soul. Uh, Jesus knows how uh, to work on your body. Uh, work on your mind. Because uh, if you give it to Jesus, uh, he will set you free. Uh, won't he do it? Uh, I believe uh, in the house of uh, somebody. Uh, believe they're free. Uh, don't fool me now. Uh, you ought to know your heart uh, that God uh, has set you free. Uh, he turned your life up all around. Uh, he saved your soul. Uh, he did you. Uh, thank God uh, for the Savior. Uh, thank God uh, for the King of the Dead. Uh, thank God uh, for the rock and the weary land. Uh, thank God uh, for the shelter uh, in the storm. Uh, ain't he all right? Uh, ain't he all right? Uh, how is your house? Uh, is your house uh, right for God? Uh, only you uh, can answer that question. Uh, but if I be honest, uh, I'm getting it right. Uh, I'm telling the Lord, uh, work on me. Uh, Somebody got to tell yourself, uh, to work on me. Uh, work on me, Jesus. Because uh, if you work on me, uh, you will fix me up. Uh, you will clean me. Uh, you will make me right. Uh, won't he do it? Uh, Jesus uh, for being who you are. Uh, I'm so glad uh, that because of Jesus uh, who died on the cross uh, who went to a grave uh, but it was early uh, somebody ought to be happy now. Uh, early uh, Sunday morning uh, he got up uh, with all power. Uh, do you believe uh, do you believe uh, he's alive. Uh, thank you Jesus uh, for being alive. Uh, thank you Sins, uh, thank you for Jesus uh, for rocking us uh, when we get weary. Uh, thank you, Jesus, uh, for providing uh, all I need. Uh, and we got a witness uh, around here. Uh, somebody uh, ought to be proof uh, that the Lord uh, is working on your house. Uh, anybody here can say, uh, if it wasn't for the Lord, right house 
for him. And we ain't perfect yet, but God just challenged us to present what we have. Cause don't you know he can take this little and perfect it? He can make it holy. He can make it acceptable if we just surrender it to him. Cause if you talk about doing a makeover, God can do a makeover that nobody can do. I dare you to try it and see for yourself that that's what Paul was suggesting. That we just present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable to God, which is what our reasonable service. So, brother and sister, that's the challenge. Are we willing to offer the best to God? Give him your house and let him work on your house. There's nobody that can build it right but the Lord. There's some proof in this house. Because when we talk about some use to me, that's proof that God has changed your life. But look at me now. By the grace of God, Paul said, I am that I am. And I took advantage of that grace. And my brother and my sister, you think about it. Amen. He is your house right for God. But you know, if it's not, he's willing to give you a chance. That's the God we serve. God ain't going to give up. He just said, give it to him. Present it to him. And then watch. Listen, how he bring change to the house. Now guess what? Desires will die if God gets a hold of the house. Amen. He'll put an end to a lot of things if we give him the house. Things you used to do, they won't even please you no more. Because God got the house. And it's now in his hands. Yeah. God bless you, saints. Heaven smile upon you. Amen. At this time, we want to extend an invitation to discipleship. And if there's someone today that might be here, we offer Christ to you. Amen. Don't be ashamed while these chairs are here.